Hi everyone. Uh, I think uh, it works. I think it works. Yeah, I hope it works. <laughs> because uh, the moderator uh, is uh, supposed to talk something and introduce about ourselves, but it seems that uh, he can't say anything and he can't hear from us. So uh, we think we have to start with ourselves, mm -hmm. but they should record ours, but uh, okay. Okay, anyway, uh, welcome to Samsung SDS and Shinan Bank session. And uh, thank you, Cliff. <laughs> and uh, welcome everybody, and thanks for joining the session. I'm Kyu Sang Lee, head of blockchain research lab in Samsung SDS. Please call me KS during this session because it is uh, simple to call me. I'm a uh, leading blockchain research lab and related topics uh, consensus off-chain transactions and blockchain platform technologies, uh, which we are going to discuss it in this session. As you see, I'm with Andrew Kim at Sinan Bank. Andrew, uh, please introduce yourself. Thank you, KS. Hi, this is Andrew. I'm a blockchain project manager at Sinan Bank. I'll briefly introduce Sinan Bank for those who are not too familiar with the company. Shinan Bank is a leading commercial bank in South Korea with strong digital innovation DNA. Ever since 2017, we have been made numbers of blockchain projects to improve the banking process. I'm very excited to share one of those topics with you here today. Yeah, me too, Andrew. Uh, in this session, uh, we are going to discuss a blockchain project to automate a government policy loan. Shinan Bank launched the project last year as a business owner and Samsung SDS, my company, provided blockchain technologies for the project. Uh, we will share the experiences that we got through the uh, project. Again, we are very happy to share them with you and the community. Mm -hmm. So here is the plan, uh, hold on a second. Andrew from uh, Shinan Bank will introduce the overall project. He will then explain why they chose the blockchain and practical challenges they met when they tried to use it. Then I will explain the specific blockchain technologies to meet business requirements. Uh, finally, we will deliver platform details and benefits. And uh, here now is Andrew Kim at Sinan Bank. Andrew, could you start? Okay, thank you again, KS. So most of the audience here today are probably thinking right now, so what exactly is government policy loan? Just briefly explaining, it is a type of government loan specific for small and medium businesses, including mom and pop stores to encourage their entrepreneurship and innovation. Unlike other bank loans, money for policy loan comes from government institution. Banks only act as a distributor of this loan. In, the case, in this case, money comes from SEMAS, which stands for Small Enterprise and Market Service. SEMAS is the biggest government institution who, fund, who, who is funding the policy loan. However, please keep in mind that policy loan is not a single product. Funding institution could be different depending on the types of the policy loan. After COVID-19, demand for policy loan significantly increased because it has a lower interest rates and more flexible period of return. In the next slide, I'll explain how the policy loan used to work before the platform. So let's imagine you are a restaurant owner who needs a government policy loan to pay for the salaries. First, you have to go to the institution office to apply for the hard copy confirmation letter. The letter proves that you are eligible for the policy loan. The institution check your credit rate, size of sales, number of employees, and et cetera. And they, they check if you're eligible or not. After that, you ha also have to visit the credit guarantor office to get guarantee approval letter. Just to get these two letters ready, it usually takes a week or two. Once these two letters are ready, now you can finally come to the bank office to apply for the loan. From there, you also need to wait another two weeks to get the loan. As you can see, the process was painful for both customers and a bank. Customers have to make three to four visits to institution, credit guarantor, and bank. Because there are three buying channels, customers often got confused with the process and it led to a terrible customer experience. Also, it usually takes 22 days to complete the loan, which is two times longer than the other loans in average. Three channels also mean that there are three different databases. Data input, data exchange, and data reconciliation between parties 
was all done by manually by hand. Excessive amount of Excel spreadsheets, real cups were necessary. The worst part is that the most of the data was delivered through emails, phone calls, faxes, or otherwise you have to upload the Excel files on SEMA's website. This definitely led to data discrepancy and privacy issues. Yes, I think it must be very complicated and not efficient at all for both users and institutions. Yes, that is correct. The issues and the drawbacks of the government policy one policy loan was very clear. So just in a one word, getting a policy loan was painful. It was too confusing, it was too complicated, and it finally took too much time. Obviously, customer satisfaction was very low than other, uh, other loans in average. From the bank's aspect, it required too much risk and cost. Moreover, it lacks scalability. If a new loan and new institution want to operate the policy loan, it requires excessive amount of IT development and integration. After COVID-19, more customers wanted to get the policy loan, so the needs of the platform was higher than ever. In the mid-2020, last year, the project was initiated with three goals. First, we wanted to unify channels so customer doesn't have to visit several different institutions. Second, we wanted to cut down the number of visits to one. Third, we wanted to automate the most of the procedures and eliminate, eliminate the manual work. We concluded that building a blockchain platform is the most effective way to solve these problems. Yeah, I think you made a good choice at yes. the time. Yeah. <laughs> we made a good choice, but we knew blockchain was great, but soon we faced few challenges. No deployment was not easy for bank since we did not have a, such an experience. Also, system stability was another issue. So we wanted to find a way to use Kubernetes for deployment and management. Lastly, network regulation standard in bank is very high. We wanted to build a very safe and stable external network to meet this standard. We need a partner who could solve these problems and who have experience. Up next is why we chose Samsung SDS as a partner. Yeah, thank you again. I agree with the Shinan's pain points. But uh, in addition to the Shinan's comments, I would like to share more voices from the customers who want to use the blockchain. The first one is that uh, I want I know what the blockchain is now, thanks to Bitcoin, Ethereum, and NFT. But it is still difficult to use. The second one is similar to the first one. We figured out user wants a simple way to use blockchain. For example, they want to use graphical interfaces. Yes, because because it is a platform, we wanted it to be very easy to use and explain yes. it with graphical interface. Yes, GUI is very important. And the third one is like blockchain deployment is hard, but when it comes to operation and network management, it becomes really hard. I think it is because uh, blockchain use cases in real service have increased. So I think that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. The last one, uh, is that users want to maximize benefits from the blockchain. Of course they are. For example, questions I frequently got, uh, what can we do next with blockchain? Or how can I easily expand business with blockchain? So we've decided to develop blockchain technology mm -hmm. to provide a simple and easy instructions through web interfaces. Mm -hmm. So uh, also we decided to utilize Kubernetes for network de deployment and management for better services. As a result, on the right side here, <clears throat> here is an example of technology. Uh, not only users can easily control and monitor the network, but also they can expand, uh, expect business expansion through GUI very easily. Okay, let's take a one step to understand what the technology is and how it works. The left side we call Next Ledger Manager provides web-based graphical interfaces for users. So users can easily command to the server to configure and deploy the fabric network through the interface. Mm -hmm. 
So on the other side of the figure, a server part receives a transmission from client, of course. In a server, uh, the deployment module here control Kubernetes jobs. For example, it does uh, creating or managing parts. Uh, you can see the peer order, uh, I mean, CA parts in the blockchain network. Mm -hmm. So on the other side, uh, administration module is in charge of configuring and managing blockchain component. Examples are creating channel or adding on OLG or install some chain code. And what could, one good thing is the ability to check the status of all network by monitoring module here. So it's a little bit more detailed architecture and I don't wanna go in detail, but I just want to mention three things. First one is the fabric version. Since last year, we've supported a fabric version to point X. So users can benefit from the lastest fabric features such as enhance the private data collection or chain code life, life cycle management. Second, it supports web-based SDK and wallet. It means that uh, web-based SDK enables web interfaces and browser wallet. However, the browser wallet here is optional. So users can use a hardware wallet instead, I mean, if they, if they want. Last one is Kubernetes users can take advantage of all features from Kubernetes, uh, which includes uh, network provisioning, high availability, and scaling. In addition, as mentioned, continuous status check for blockchain components are available. So with uh, users can complete blockchain network provisioning in minutes. And uh, even though there are some requests for upgrading, or changing network configuration, mm -hmm. it could be quickly done. Mm -hmm. In addition, users, users can deploy network component even in multiple network environment. You know that um, blockchain com consortium consists of many different organizations. Mm -hmm. It usually right. does. Yes. yes. For example, we observed enterprises and banks like you mm -hmm. in the finance financial sectors uh, want to use an um, on-premise network. Yeah, that is correct. Bank usually prefer on-premise mm -hmm. network rather than cloud. Yes. Just for the security issues. Yeah, and then I, I know that there is a regulation for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. So, but on the other hand, IT companies may want to use the public cloud. So we believe that uh, the hybrid cloud provisioning feature can satisfy participants with different needs. So let's see how it works. So first, we will create a peer. Uh, we, to create a peer, we need a name and uh, date type and a fabric version and uh, order name or some other informations. Then put some password and just click. That's done. We just created a peer using Kubernetes. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we will deploy the chain code. First, package and the peer nodes to be installed. Then uh, we have to approve it according to chain code life cycle management. So it is the process of uh, approving the chain code. We need to put some name and some other information to approve, and that's done. And the last one is committing the chain code. So. That's it. Just we went through the chain code lifecycle management with graphical interfaces. It's just as KS explained, adding a peer node and deploying the chain code was quite easy during the process. Yeah. After provisioning, users can monitor overall blockchain network status. The left figures show the network status. For example, the number of, number of active peers and the height of blocks. The right side is the example of the administrator page of a business owner like Shinhan. <clears throat> Excuse me. The page can have more business related features such as the number of applications uh, submitted today, but something like that. Yes, this page helps us to monitor the network in a mm -hmm. glance. So we use it very often. Mm -hmm. Good. So uh, we provided this technology to Shinhan 
uh, as they easily wanted to provision and manage the blockchain network. And Xinan, I think Xinan added more blockchain and business features to the platform. Is it right? Yes, it is right. Yeah. So they, uh, with that, they built a platform uh, called the Government Loan Policy, uh, Government Policy Loan Platform, right? Yep. So I think you could explain the platform better. Sure. Yeah. I will explain. I will explain how the platform works and the, how platform changes the policy loan process. On September 2020, which is last year, we finally launched the blockchain based, more specifically, Hyperledger fabric based government policy loan platform to connect data among participants in real time. Thanks to Samsung SDS Next Ledger and network management technology, the project could be completed smoothly within four months which is quite shorter than other blockchain projects we have experienced. Now the customer does not have to make several visits. Shinan, we have signed a consignment agreement with SEMAS, so we could issue a confirmation letter on behalf of the SEMAS. Prior to the platform, data of confirmation letter application was delivered to SEMAS only once, only on every Monday and Thursday only. However, after the platform, this data can be delivered on real time at any day. I'll go through the example really quick. So as soon as the loan officer at banking branch at Xinan input the application data into blockchain platform, same as they can check and approve the confirmation letter right away through the platform. There is no need to uh, Excel spreadsheet going on between. This allows loan assignment to be operated in real time as well. The biggest change is that you do not need to email and upload Excel full of free lookups, as I mentioned. I'll talk about how the automation was possible in the next slide. Okay, so this slide shows the examples of how we use event listener feature to automate the loan process, particularly repayment schedule. For policy loan, customer has to repay a certain amount of loan every quarter. Before the platform, Shinan and Semas, we have our own repayment schedule data. Because data input was done by hand, there was already some issues with data discrepancy. But now there is only one unified repayment schedule data and the platform, as you can see, act as a data bridge between Shinan Bank and the institution. So let's go through the example. Once the request of the loan allocation triggers, the institution's internal batch program through event listener to verify and confirm the allocation data. Then pl platform updates this data and create the payment schedule right away. This allows process to eliminate emailing and uploading of repayment schedule access spreadsheet and some other tedious lookup works. And also, as you probably everyone here knows that deleting data is not an easy process when you apply blockchain. We believe that Fabric could help us get through this issue. Because this is a loan platform, it has to comply with many different regulations. It had to comply with our guideline, the bank's guideline, mm -hmm. the institution, the, the SEMAS guideline, and also mm -hmm. GDPR. To solve this issue, we created our key to isolate PDC data with the letter data. You could understand PDC as a couch DB where you can manually or automatically delete the data. And letter data, as its name implies, it's a blockchain. So you cannot change the data here. Personal data and financial data, because they are private data, they are saved in the PDC, while repayment data, they are saved in the letter where you cannot change it. Think our key as a uh, hash data, hash it's hashed and it's used for one-time access code for repayment data. This help us to prevent data abuse and recreation of the data, thus make us to comply with the GDPR. Once the loan is fully repaid, all data in PDC could be is, can be deleted. So finally, here are some of the um, business benefits we have experienced in the last eight months after the platform launch. 
we definitely see higher customer status. I mean, it's obvious. Customer visits are now down to one. Mm. They don't have to go back and forth and ask the, the banking branches what they can do. We also integrated confirmation letter application process into our uh, banking mobile app. So it means that customer now doesn't even have to come to the office. Mm -hmm. They just can apply for the confirmation letter on their mobile phone. Now the time period of loan process is down to 12 days from 22 days. Um, we also, the Shinan also enjoys the benefit of the platform ecosystem. Yeah. Because most of the loan process is automated, as we mentioned in the previous slides, we could cut down 13,000 working hours per year. As a platform success-free runs, we see increasing numbers of banks and other institutions who want to join the platform. Two more commercial banks in Korea are now in touch with us to join the platform. It will be the first use case in Korea for banks to on such profits running the blockchain platform. I think it is very impressive because mm -hmm. uh, you just measure the number because mm -hmm. I know that it is very not easy to find some mm -hmm. quantitative outcomes from the blockchain product. So, and uh, the number is too high. I mean, 13,000 working hours cut down, that's very mm -hmm. impressive. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, and I would like to add some benefits from the technology. First, mm -hmm. uh, users, can reduce deployment and configuration cost thanks to dynamic network provisioning. Mm -hmm. You would know that manual provisioning requires somewhat iterative and complex and error-prone task. Second, users can have more network choices. For example, they can use uh, public cloud, hybrid, uh, on-premise, whatever. True. The last one is related to uh, operations. So operators can easily check the status of networks so they can respond to the emergence, such as lack of resources and service outages. And I like to mention that we also observed uh, resource allocation for blockchain are very important. So, okay, uh, here are some key takes away we want to deliver. Andrew, could you summarize it? Sure. Um, so you might think it is inefficient to integrate blockchain into banking service because bank bank infrastructure is very complicated and it's full of legacy system we are very aware and we have very experienced that we tried to apply blockchain but it took too much time and too much risk but now with the hyper of fabric next lecture and other supporting tools uh, integrating blockchain into banking system i think it's easier than ever right now just as the example we showed the government policy loan, I hope you two looking for a service with a multilateral structure business to apply blockchain. Uh, this kind of a business model will bring you the dramatic changes in both customer and company as aspect. Okay, thank you. And uh, from the technical side, blockchain, I would like to mention this one. Uh, blockchain configuration and management are somewhat complex and complicated, but I believe uh, making it easier for users is the key to business mm -hmm. adoption. Yes. Okay, that's it. Uh, we hope the session was uh, helpful for both uh, business and technical side. And uh, thank you. Thank you for the joining session and feel free to ask any question. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wonder that Cliff is online or, and, uh, let me just, yeah, okay. Okay, so... may I copy? Okay. So uh, I we unloaded the PPT copy of PPT uh, file in the, the schedule.com. Okay, I thank you. Uh, hi, Julian. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and so, glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. So well, uh, we unloaded the presentation, so you can download it in the in the in, the, in that page. So thank you, and uh, thank you, Julian. And uh, is there any another question or comment? Oh, hi. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> So there is like one, one or two more minutes that we can answer your question. If you have any. So uh, Julian Golden asked us, what is plans going forward? Uh, in a bank side, 
Uh, we are now in a talk with the two other commercial banks who want to join this platform. And we're going to charge them with the fees of using the platform. So it will be the, probably the, one of the first, first case that bank are using blockchain platform to actually earning money. And we went through the, the, uh, the legal checks and there's, uh, there's no problem with it. And now we are having, also we are talking with a few other institutions who want to join the platform. Um, but it just started, so we don't we, we don't know how it's gonna be happen, but we will see. So yep. yeah, we are just trying to enlarge the platform ecosystem for now. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And from uh, technical side, uh, we will uh, keep increase. I mean, keep enhancing the technology. So we call that technology is uh, as a, a blockchain management technologies, but uh, we will add some more features like. Uh, dynamic resource allocations. So we think that it uh, would be helpful for other uh, uh, blockchain operators or some, some enterprises want to use blockchain for mm -hmm. easy, easy. So that's, that's the our plan. Mm -hmm. And we think it's time's up. So mm -hmm. because it's only two minutes left. So I think if we have some question or uh, any comments, Feel free to send us uh, any email to us. And uh, thanks again. How can we enterprise join this initiative? Um, could you elaborate a little more on this question? Like, you mean how the other banks are joining the platform? Uh, in that case, um, we are actually we have an experience with with building ourselves. So the two other banks, we are doing the uh, doing the doing what's what's that called? That the the um, we are consulting them, and we are talking with their IT sessions as well. And we are get, we have the guideline uh, documents for them to apply this blockchain system. And thanks to Next Ledger, um, opening the peer node and deploying the blockchain is very easy. So that could be done within us. And yeah, I don't think we need like external IT guys to come and like uh, and add those. Okay, uh, it might be last comment. Uh, uh, somebody is, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes. So, okay. Now know this PPT in the schedule.com and uh, and there is an email uh, for, uh, for both of us. So you can, if you have any question or comment, please send us uh easily mm -hmm. please and i think that's it mm -hmm. uh, thanks for the joining session thanks you yeah. can email with uh, questions mm -hmm. and it was andrew from shinan and thank you from the samsung sds okay thank you thank you bye, bye.